I was right again. What was I right about again? I was right about kernel mode anti-cheat. I was perusing x.com, twitter.com by some, and I saw this little tweet here that said, I sure am glad that kernel level anti-cheat has reached the point where they're all starting to conflict with each other. The future of gaming is here. And they link this picture here that is a screenshot of the r slash Battlefield subreddit. So if you don't know, Battlefield uh, 6 just dropped their beta. The game looks very good, by the way, a separate topic for a separate video. Um, but this person is trying to install the the beta, and the game is saying with a security violation, the application has failed to start due to a general software incompatibility. Please uninstall the following conflicting software, and you'll see here very, very tiny is the word Valorant. Yes, that Valorant. Valorant by Riot Games. The Battlefield 6 game will not install if it sees you have Valorant installed on your PC. Now you may be asking, that's odd. Why would Valorant be incompatible with Battlefield 6? They're separate games. They shouldn't conflict with each other at all. Unless you knew about Riot Vanguard. Riot Vanguard is this program written by Riot Games. It is a kernel level anti-cheat that shipped with Valorant since release in 2020 and started shipping with League of Legends in 2024. It is what is known as a kernel level anti-cheat. If you're not aware of what a kernel level anti-cheat is, basically your computer operates in two separate modes of execution, right? You have the kernel, which is a very privileged mode of execution. Think of like, you know, the Windows OS runs here. And then in the user mode level, you have programs like, you know, maybe it's uh, leagueoflegends.exe, or maybe you have things like, um, you know, runescape.exe, right? And typically what cheaters will do is they will install programs on their computer that are hacks, right? And these hacks, because they run run at the same privilege level as the other program, they can just read the memory out of this program, or in some cases, write to the memory of that program to reveal things to the user that they could not visually otherwise see. Maybe inside the Battlefield 6 memory, they can read this sequence of digits, right? I'm making shit up. But it may be the case that at a certain location, a certain number, like this hex 02, for example, indicates a unit at a particular location. And that location may be behind a wall, maybe behind a bunker, maybe someplace you visually cannot see. Because hack.exe can just read that memory willy-nilly, you can show that to the user in a different screen and reveal to them, hey, there's an enemy over there, go check there, giving them a privileged advantage that other people may not have. That's a hack. And then enter the world of kernel-level anti-cheats. The games industry unfortunately has entered this really terrible trend where now every game publisher has effectively their own flagship anti-cheat software. Uh, Riot has Vanguard, EA has, I think, Easy Anti-Cheat, and Epic has something else. Like every, Basically, every publisher has their own program that runs at the kernel level, the privilege level, to look for these hack processes, right? So what this, this .sys file is doing is because it runs at the kernel level, it is privileged. It has access to the rest of the software on the computer. And it's going to look for known signatures of things like hack.exe. If it sees hack.exe or like the MD5 sum, the checksum of that image running, it will flag that user for being a cheater. And while this may all seem well and good kind of at face value, this raises a lot of kind of like obvious security concerns for two reasons. One, because you are giving the publisher privileged access to your computer by default every time you want to play one of their games. What if, for example, instead of looking for programs that are running like hack.exe, what if the publisher sees that I'm watching not porn.exe, right? And via some telemetry or something else, it picks that up and ships it back to EA headquarters or Riot headquarters. That's a violation of my privacy. I don't really like that. Also, there's a technical, more vulnerability side of the house that I'll explain using a previous example. There have been ransomware groups, groups of people that are using malware to hold computers hostage that abuse anti cheat vulnerabilities to bypass antivirus. Genshin Impact, for example, has an anti-cheat that at one point via a simple ioctal, basically from user mode, you could talk to the driver, you could have the anti-cheat disable the antivirus because the anti-cheat runs in a privileged state. So the ransomware group was going in, they would get onto a computer, they would see that you have Genshin Impact installed, and they could use that to disable your anti-cheat locally, which is absolutely insane. So by installing these programs from these publishers, you're kind of one, potentially having a privacy issue, but two, you're exposing your computer to a new threat landscape that may exist in the vulnerabilities that the publisher ships without knowing, or maybe intentionally, who knows. But why does EA care if the Valorant anti-cheat is running on your computer? Why does it matter if there's one anti-cheat and another anti-cheat? Well, 
In a perfect world, the anti-cheat system is only running when the game is running. So instead of watching notporn.exe, it should make sense that anti-cheat.sys, the anti-cheat for Battlefield, only runs when Battlefield is running. And that is the case for almost all of the anti-cheats that exist on the on the market, except for which one? Which one? You may have guessed it. Yep, drum roll please. It is Riot's Vanguard. Riot anti-cheat is a kernel mode anti-cheat that loads as a boot driver. What that means is it is on when your computer turns off and the anti-cheat does not stop running until your computer turns off. It is one of the most invasive anti-cheats that has ever been seen. We're about to get very technical here, but if you're not technical, it's fine, I'll explain it. The anti-cheat is so invasive that what it does is it inserts what is called a hook for a syscall of the operating system. If you're not sure what that means, basically what is happening here is the Vanguard anti-cheat is impersonating the operating system for all of these syscalls. So whenever you are running the anti-cheat, Vanguard is live, you are calling allocate memory, free memory, suspend thread, suspend process. Instead of your OS, like Windows, actually being the one that's doing this action, Vanguard is inserting itself in the middle and taking that action. Also, Vanguard has this crazy way of swapping out, it's called control register three, not really important, but basically if you try to do the thing where you look at the memory of Vanguard running, for example, or Valorant running, if you try to inspect that memory, it will swap out the memory page live at runtime so you get a different page than what is actually there. It is hands down the most invasive anti-cheat on the market. If any of this hacking stuff interests you, by the way, go check out Stack Smash in the pinned comment below. This, in my opinion, is why the EA anti-cheat refuses to run if it sees Valorant installed. I think they are genuinely concerned about certain tactics or certain ways that the EA anti-cheat does inspection of user mode processes conflicting with the other ways that Valorant does its syscall hooking and memory hooking. We are entering this really, really weird landscape where Every publisher effectively, so Riot, EA, Epic, etc., has their own kernel level anti-cheat. And they are all using different hook points, different tactics, different like ways of hooking the kernel that are all unique and have different side effects on the operating system. What this boils down to is that we are coming to a place where certain games are not compatible with other games. And what this means is that like you can't have Battlefield 6 installed if you have Valorant installed because they are concerned that the kernel mode anti-cheats will like touch each other and potentially crash your system. Inside the kernel, right, like the Windows kernel that runs the, the operating system, we have this weird like land war. Like literally there is like a war going on for territory about like what hook points different publishers own. Like, oh, this region of the hook is owned by Riot. And like, oh, uh, EA's anti-cheat uses this over here. Oh, but Epic uses this part. And if any of these touch each other incorrectly, it'll blow up your computer. We're entering almost a phase where like you need to have a separate computer for every different game publisher that is different from the computer that you use for your personal stuff. Because again, the kernel is this privilege level of memory that you like once a driver gets installed, you can never really be sure if your system is safe again. So it's like, you know, is EA going to report things that I do on the computer back to their servers? I don't know just to be safe separate computer to game on. It's a terrible consumer experience that I don't think anyone should really have to be put. Now it's kind of like a, a light at the end of the tunnel moment. Uh, Microsoft is moving antivirus providers and also like there's a separate article on uh, kernel mode anti-cheat out of the Windows kernel. Microsoft is ready to test Windows changes to prevent another CrowdStrike incident. So if you don't remember what CrowdStrike, the CrowdStrike incident was an event in July of 24 where basically all around the world, this company called CrowdStrike had this EDR, this endpoint detection and response system uh, called called Falcon, right? Falcon was a system that basically was a security as a service platform, where instead of you having your own dedicated SOC and security operations center to like, like see hacks happening, CrowdStrike would do it for you, right? And CrowdStrike, again, to have this kind of privileged level of access to the computer would run at the kernel level. And so when a vulnerability got triggered in the Falcon EDR, it literally crashed computers all over the world, taking the entire global economy generally offline for like 12 hours. I am very concerned that the movement of code from user mode to kernel mode just for gamers is gonna push more of that attack surface for gamers into the kernel and expose everybody to a privacy 
and security concern that they're not even aware of. And so, I mean, again, Microsoft's trying to get rid of this, trying to figure out ways to create uh, APIs effectively to move code out of the kernel so that antivirus and other security products can do it without having to run kernel mode code. How that works, I really couldn't tell you. I'm not an engineer at Microsoft, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, so anyway, guys, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, I appreciate it. If you like this video, hit that sub button and then give me a little, little kiss right there. Okay.